she's, uh, she's, she's going to say that you better tell her. You stand up because she's going to look at you. And then you're going to be done. Mm.
awesome God. He reigned from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Isn't he an awesome God this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Most merciful and gracious God, it is in the mighty name of Jesus that we come into your house praising uh, your faithfulness and uh, giving thanks for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we welcome you among us today. Bless our service as we praise you with songs, with prayers, and your word. Father, you are worthy of all our praise. And may our worship be genuine and sincere. Father, we pray for the people of this grand society. Give us the desire to seek and love you with all our hearts, our minds, and our soul. Revive our spirits, Lord God. Come and, and comfort those who have been tested by the hardship of life. Lord, you are the God who lifts up those who are weighed down, and you are the God who provides. So give them courage and hope in the troubles of times, and may they know your presence in them, and that you are the strength, the healer, and the salvation. Father, bless and be with the speaker of the hour. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be at work opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we bless your name for it all. Amen. We invite you to sing with us as we worship our awesome God together.
Welcome to our worship experience. My name is Minister Jean Menet, and the speaker of the hour will be Minister Don Menet. We are glad that you are here with us today, and we bless the Lord for you. Once again, good morning. We'll now have our announcements. Good morning. At this point in the worship services, announcements are being shown on the monitors. Those same announcements are now being read for those who dialed in. Although we have returned to in-person worship, there are still three ways to give and send your tithes and offerings. First, you can mail your contributions to the P.O. Box, Shiloh Baptist Church New Site, P.O. Box 93, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 22404. Next, you can bring it in person to the greenhouse next door to the church office, 513 Princess Anne. The mail slot is on the door. Just drop it in the slot on the door. You may also give online at www.shilohnewsite.com. Follow the prompts for online giving. Online donation will pop up. Just follow the directions. The next announcement is that we are having a retirement banquet for Dr. Anthony A. Parrish and Minister Bernadine Parrish. September 5th, 2021, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Clarion Hotel, formerly the Fredericksburg Hospitality House, 2801 Plank Road, Fredericksburg, Virginia. The banquet will be in person and live streamed via the Zoom worship link or phone number currently used for Sunday and Wednesday prayer and praise services. The banquet fee is $25. 
The fee is due by August 27, 2021. There's limited seating, first come, first served. Pay the $25 banquet fee one of four ways. The first way, Shiloh Baptist Church website, www.shilohnewsite.com. Select online giving. Under the view donor portal, select fund parish retirement banquet and please list name of person attending. Second, by the U.S. mail, address and mail checks or money orders to Shiloh Baptist Church news site, P.O. Box 93, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 22404. Attention, Dr. Parrish's Retirement Banquet. Please do not mail cash. And third option, drop the envelope in the greenhouse door mail slot. Address envelope as in option two and drop it at the greenhouse door slot only. Attention, Dr. Parrish's Retirement Banquet. Please do not drop off cash. And the fourth option, church secretary in building three. Address the envelope as in options two and three. Visit Sister Charlotte Parker, the church secretary in building three. The office hours, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. Attention, Dr. Parrish's retirement banquet. You may leave cash, checks, or money orders with Sister Parker at the church office. We're also asking for 15-second congratulatory videos for the retirement banquet. If you or your family would like to send a short 15-second congratulatory video to be shown at the banquet, preferably text the video to Sister Eunice Payne at 540-287-6083, or you may email videos to her at all for me 01 at yahoo.com. Again, that is A L L, the number 4 M E 01 at yahoo.com. Please label text or email parish retirement video. Videos must be received no later than August 22nd, 2021, in order to be processed in time for the banquet. August 27th is the deadline to receive funds. All $25 banquet funds must be received by August 27 in order to submit a final count to the hotel. We praise God for Dr. Anthony Parrish and Minister Bernadine Parrish. We are grateful for their service to Shiloh Newsite for the past 18 years and for this opportunity to celebrate and honor them. We pray that you will be able to join us for this wonderful celebration. Please limit personal gifts to gift cards or cash. COVID-19 health protocols will be in effect. Thank you for your attention. The announcements for the week has been read. Please govern yourself as accordingly. I offer to our prayer, then we will have a music selection and our message in that order. Good morning, let us pray. Gracious God, we come in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our all in all. God, we thank you for the gifts of life that you've given us life, health, and strength, friendships, relationships, and the sheer joy of one more day in this life. So God, we are grateful for this opportunity to return to you gifts to give you honor and praise and glory. We pray God, whatever those gifts may be, that they're given in a willing heart with cheerfulness, we pray, God, that you will bless and anoint these gifts wherever they come from and however they were received, that it may be multiplied, that your kingdom may be expanded, your will may be done, your name may be glorified, and that people may be saved. 
may you be glorified in all that is given. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we ask all these things. Amen. Amen. His presence has changed me. I don't know about you, but it has changed me. Has it changed you? Hallelujah. It has changed us all. Oh, what a great pleasure it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. One more time. We're here today to 
We give honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. But I also want to thank the worship leader who led us today, amen. our choir, amen, who sung beautifully. And I think there's a special blessing and thanks to all of you who came out today and to our <coughs> media ministry for all the work they have done Amen. for us to be able to have this service live, live screen, also to have, be here in person and to take advantage of the opportunity that God has given us. Uh, think back if this has happened 20 years ago how we had limited opportunity to not only have a worship service, but to communicate with one another, to have meetings. I'm, I'm Zoomed out, I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, but it, it's all good. It's all great. And, and one special blessing to the deacon document here at this church for all the work that they are doing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is not one, it's a team of individuals. And that's what's important. If you have your Bibles with, with you today, I ask that you turn to the 18th chapter of Matthews, Matthews 18, and we're going to look at verses 15 through 20. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20. And it reads, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his faults between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by mouths of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. Hallelujah. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen, and a tax collector. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. May the Lord add a reading, blessing to the reading of his everlasting holy word. You may be seated. Amen. If I were to, to title this message today, it would be, my brother and sister's keeper. My brother and sister's keeper. There are certain tasks that we don't like to do, but they are very important. If you have a pet, you have to clean up after it. It could be an aquarium. It might be the litter box, or it might be a situation where you have to take the dog out for a walk. But these things are important. If you're like me, I cannot stay in a cluttered desk or workspace. Cleaning up and organizing it is very important. I often wonder what would happen with all of the things that are spread out all over the place if I would lose something or whatever, but I gotta have a clean, Deaths. Perhaps it's a situation where you're cooking meals for your family 
Or maybe it's a situation where you're doing preventative maintenance on your automobile so it can run better. But some of the tasks that we have to do are very tedious, but they are important. However, it's how our Father in heaven directs us today. Sin is an eternal, dangerous scenario that we all have to deal with. But we have the duty to warn people about the everlasting damage that can happen upon their brothers and sisters if they are sinning. Let's reminisce just for a few minutes back to the earlier chapters of Genesis, particularly looking at the adversarial relationship between Cain and Abel. Cain was jealous of Abel and his approval from God. So in the end, he murdered him. But God came to Cain to talk to him, to show him his sins, and he wanted him to repent. But God's first question to Cain was, where is Abel, your brother? And Cain, being as callous as he is, he asked the question to God, am I my brother's keeper? This is Genesis 4, verses 9. That's not just the response of a murderous murderer trying to hide his sin. That might be the response from, from many different situations that come about. Am I my brother or sister's keeper? Surely not. They have their own families. They have their own lives. Am I, should I be meddling in that? They make their own decisions. And that's none of my business. They do their own thing. I shouldn't interfere. And in a lot of ways, this is true. We do well to mind our own business, amen? amen. <laughs> but what if someone is plunging themselves into a dangerous situation? Are we just to stand by there and do nothing? Should you act to rescue this person? Should you? Should you reach down and pull them up? Or do you say to them, that's none of my business. I'll just keep to myself. No, I'm going to scoop down and I'm going to help that person and try to lift them up. Amen. There are a lot of things that people might choose to do that in, it's not in the scope of what Jesus says in his gospel. Sin is not a matter of opinion. Sin is a disregarding of what God clearly says is right and wrong. Amen. Sin is a problem, but not because it makes me uncomfortable, but it might do something I find that's totally immoral, that is repulsive, and sin always is a problem because it's disregarding God's will. Sin, oh sin, is disastrous. And if left unchecked, it would lead to eternal in hell. Mm -hmm. Even if someone feels that that's no big deal, that is not going to hurt me anyway. But sin, as God defines it, is always hurting the one who is committing it. That's why Jesus is so adamant when he says, if your brother sins against you, go and show him his sins just between the two of you. But if you listen, if he listens, you have gained a brother. Mm -hmm. If someone has sinned against you, really sinned, and I'm talking about not something that simply that you disagree with, but but it's something that, that has made you upset. But if they had sinned against you towards, according to God's word, you have the solemn responsibility to talk to them immediately. Mm -hmm. Approach the person who has sinned and speak with him or her alone. If it's possible, 
that they do not realize what they have done, or even if they think it's, if you think it's deliberately, your attitude and submission should be with love and will help that person to repent and apologize. Amen. Above all else, go to them with the idea of winning your brother and sister and not winning the argument. Hallelujah. It is possible to win the argument and also lose your brother or your sister. And in that moment, you might, you can assure them that your forgiveness for them is more importantly that God has forgiven them also. Amen. Therefore, you have regained them. Hallelujah. We, we must have the spirit of meekness and gentleness when we speak to restore a brother or sister. We must not and I'll say this again, we must not go about condemning the offender and spreading gospel. Hallelujah, wall. <laughs> we, and I'm putting the emphasis on we, must lovingly seek to help them in the same way that you would want someone to help you if the situation was reversed. I, 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 I can't I can't not emphasize that because I, I've seen it happen over something little. And the next thing you know, this thing is out of proportion. You got families against families. You got street against the street. It, it happens. It happens. But it doesn't always work like that. Amen. Sometimes the person is resistant to the rebuke to the correction and the call to repent. Mm -hmm. They reflect and they argue just like Cain did. But, but Jesus says, your work is not done. And here, listen to this. If he will not listen, and let me put this this way, if he or she will not listen, take one or two other along with you so that every matter may be established by testimony of the two or three witnesses. Mm -hmm. Now what we're talking about here is getting some more people together. Get two people who you can depend on. And watch this. While in the initial approach, it was private. It was two people. But now it's become public because now we have to call them, call them reforces to help us. And that reinforces their, they're there to help us so we can get a confirmation of what, how damaging this issue is. If, now, if the offender refuses to make things right, then we may feel free to share the burden with that one or two other persons. We should share the facts as we see them, as we see them, and ask the brother and sisters for their assistance. After all, hey, we could be wrong about what we thought we was going on. Amen? And if the associates feel that this cause is right, then together, together we can go to the offender and try once again to redeem them. Only can the brothers and sisters assist in praying and persuasion. I like that. Praying and persuasion. But then they can be witnesses to the church of the truth of the conversation. Uh, when, when sin is not dealt with honestly, it always spreads. What was once a matter between two people has grown into to involve four or five and now we're in the situation that we might have to have the church involved in it. And no wonder Jesus and Paul call leaven sin because it spreads like yeast. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a story here. It's very important to what we're talking about. The story, they had a gentleman in a village who loved the gossip. And the people in the village was getting upset about this. So they went to the eldest man in the village and they called him the sage. And they asked the sage to deal with this individual who is going around gossiping. 
So the sage took the man aside and gave him a bag of, of feathers. And he told him to go spread these feathers all over the village and then come back and see him the next day. The man did as he was told. And when he came back and after he had spread all of the flowers, I mean, all of the, the feathers all over the village, he then came back and talked to the sage. And the, the sage did told him, he said, now I want you to take this other bag and I want you to go out and I want you to gather again all of the, all of the uh, <laughs> feathers that you have dispersed around the community. And he looked at him, he said, but sir, that's impossible. He said, the wind has blown all of the feathers everywhere. I'm not gonna be able to go out and collect them all. He said, exactly. <laughs> the wise man says, exactly. So it is that when you gossip and you spread rumors about others, you can't go back and collect them. Hallelujah. Amen. So the greatest enemy that we have in the church is gossip. Don't do it. Amen, Wall. Amen. But perhaps the person will even ignore what the small group is there to help him with. So then you have to call in the church. And it says, if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to even the church, then treat him as an unbeliever or a tax collector. Now, now, when you look at this, again, what started as a private problem between two people is now has become open to the entire church and they see what's going on. But we have some factors here that we need to look at. Taking a person's behavior before the church is a very serious matter. And there are several things that we have to keep in mind. One, a person's life is involved and a person can, be, can become damaged and turned off and pushed away from the Lord and God's people forever. And the second thing we gotta look at is this. Public discussion of a, of a personal behavior is an extremely sensitive subject. And it's easy to arouse emotions and cause more division. And it can even frighten some of the spiritually minded parishioners away from the church. Amen. I've seen it happen. Amen. Personal behavior and scandalous news are what people enjoy discussion. Amen. It, it is the subject of even more rumors. It can aflame the tongues. I like this. I can inflame the tongues and the imagination of other people. And few of the spiritual free of the urge to have them to start talking and making false rumors about the individual. Mm -hmm. The other thing here that, that, that's, that's important is that few can keep confidential information. Amen. 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 Even they love to talk. No one gonna keep it quiet. Even the most trusted, the most loving, and the most wise individuals have a tendency to what? Talk. Amen. It, 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 you know, you know, defining a person who will not disseminate this information is like finding a rough diamond that takes many lifetimes to discover. <laughs> Therefore, when you share this information, you better believe that it's going to go around that circle and it's going to come back to you totally different. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the end, the lack of repentance indicates that someone has cut themselves off from God's forgiveness and they have rejected God's clear directions on what's right and wrong. And at this point, they have re rejected Jesus. 
They have decided that their actions is acceptable. They don't need forgiveness of their sin. And they don't have a problem standing for God and judgment for what they have done. Of course, you and I know that's not true. You and I know that we have one last opportunity here that we must warn this person of the rootlessness of their sin will separate them from us and make it clear to them that they are in a situation that they had separated themselves from Jesus forever. Amen. Our prayer is that this last action leads them back to Jesus and away from their sin. Sometimes, sometimes this work ends in encouraging ways. You have regained your brother or sister. And sometimes it ends in trouble, in a very troublesome way, where you have to treat them as if they are an unbelievable and a tax collector. Mm -hmm. But regardless, the work must be done. Hallelujah. We must do this work. So we cannot be decisive about ourselves. We cannot think, I won't talk to this person about this. It won't do any good anyway. You, they don't want to listen. They don't want to change. It always will be the same with them. Does Jesus say to address sin only when you assume your words will have an impact? Does he leave room for avoiding the situation and just holding on to hostility and resentment against the person who has wronged you? That answer is no. If your brother or sister is sinned against you, go and show him his sin just between the two of you. Do it. There is no wiggle room in this. There is no option to this. This is the responsibility of the Christian to his brother or sister who has sinned. Mm -hmm. Likewise, we should be ready to be on the receiving end of this work. Mm, amen. Now, if, if I'm caught in sin that is in, enticing and is frustrating, my brothers and sisters should come to me concerning and let me know what is wrong. But in that, what should I do? Should I be angry at them because of their inquisitiveness? Or should I alienate them because I'm frustrating? No, I should see them as loving and brother sisters. And then I should sit down with them and dig into God's word with them. And then I'm going to confirm that their concerns are supported by his holy word. Hallelujah. You don't need, you don't need to start an argument. It's in the word that I'm wrong. And if in the word that I find out that they're wrong, I'm going to tell them. Amen. That's what you need to do. Don't sit there and argue about, well, it ain't none of your business. It's God's business. <laughs> we don't embark in this work for spite or for, or for pittiness. I mean, we, we're, not, we're not there for that. And we're not there, we're there to show spiritual concerns for someone who is trapped in sin. We know what it is to be besieged by sin, hallelujah, because we all have been there. We know what it feels like to be trapped because we were dead until the Lord saved us. But, but we also know that it means, what it means to have the Savior to wipe away that slate, to wipe it clean. We know that every time we refuse to talk to our brothers or sisters who have sinned against us, and every time we haven't had the right thing and talk about the sins that we have had, we, we never talk about our stumbling and how we had stumbled along our way. We never talk about the things that we have done when we have fallen. We never talk about how we have been rebellious against our Father, Jesus the Christ. Now, when you think about this, all of these things that we've done and we talk about and we are, we've been 
a part of and those who were in sin against us and those we have a sin against us. He took the punishment and died on that old rough and rugged cross for all of us so that we might have life and life more abundantly. He did it all. He did it all for you and he did it for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, we go into this work knowing that it will be able to rescue and we can, we can bring somebody from death back to life again. We each, we each know the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We should not be the person that's dangling off of the spiritual bridge. We shouldn't leave that person hanging. We need to reach down and grab them and bring him back into the love of our Father, Jesus the Christ. And, and also, in every case, we don't need to be out there advocating that we are to be all, to end all things, to do the right thing. We need to look at this at where they're trying to save a person who's killing themselves, whether they have the knowledge of it or not. And when I say killing themselves, they're walking away from the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. When we have to say to someone who's unrepentant that their sin is not forgiven, God supports us on that. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And when we get to tell someone who has repented their sins and that their sins are forgiven, God assures us that it's true. When it says whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when you do this work uncomfortably, as it may be, as an individual, or even if we have to do it as a congregation or as a group, we're never alone. For God is on our side, and he supports this work that he has told us to do. But we have seldom, and how the seldom, we have the seldom responsibility to address sin. But we also have the responsibility to joy to announce God's complete and free forgiveness in Jesus to repent his people. Lord, oh Lord, give us the strength to carry out your tasks, to carry out the tasks that you have directed us to do. And Lord, oh Lord, it's going to be for your glory and for your glory alone. May God bless you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I remember the old deacons, and I used the word, I should have said the elder deacons. <laughs> the, the elder deacons in, my, in the church, and, and you know, when you, you're young, you used to run through the church, amen? And then they, they have that evil look at you. Boy, don't you run in God's house. <laughs> And it's the same thing now that we look at it. I can see them now, and I remember them going towards a person who had sinned. And I mean, they had a group of them. They go down there and talk to them. But it's changed. But we, God's word is not, it tells us that we need to address sin, and that's what we need to do. Amen. This is the invitation for Christian discipleship. So we all stand. Hallelujah. It is not without question. And, and, and I want to stress this. How good you are, how bad you are, or how bad you think you are, God loves you. And there's an opportunity here for you to present yourself to him. And the question I like to ask, are you sure you'll be going to heaven? Are you sure? In the Bible, God gives us the plan 
To be born again means to be saved. And, and Romans 3, 23 tells us that for all has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to take God and take his hand and take his word and understand that salvation is there for you. If you accepted the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning, just raise your hand if you're out there. Amen. Amen. That, that's wonderful. We all have to accept him as our Lord and Savior. There might be someone here today who want to come forth and commit yourself to Jesus and to say, I am a sinner. That's okay. A deacon will speak with you afterwards, after this service. And if you are at home, on your podcast, on your telephone, listening to the service, you can call 540-779-7469. Again, that's 540-779-7474. We want to pray with you. And we want to share the good news regarding salvation. Hallelujah. Again, that number is 540-779-7474. And if you're looking for a church where there's preaching, teaching, and you can continue your spiritual growth, we ask you to consider shallow Baptist Church news site. Is there one? Amen. Please remain standing for our altar call. Let us pray. Our Father, our great Jehovah, we thank you, Lord, for this hour, this minute in time, Lord, where we can come together and say thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, for your word with all as we walk through the dangers of this world. Father, I ask that you pray a special blessing upon this church and this church family. We ask, Father, that you bless the leadership that we have here in this church. I ask, Lord, that you would pray a special prayer upon those that are responsible for our children that are going back to school. Yes, Lord. And Lord, they need you, Lord, but guide them. Yes. As this pandemic has not changed, it's getting worse. And we ask that you just bless them, Father. Yes, God. Protect them. Yes. And Lord, and we ask that you also pray your best upon our local, state, and national leaders. This is a time of need, Jesus. And we know that it, you have your hands wrapped around the situations. Father, I ask that you protect us from the seen and unseen evil that is wrapping itself around us in our communities that's seen or unseen evil, that's trying to separate households, that's trying to separate mother from their daughter, father from their son. But Lord, we know that as long as we keep our hands in your hand, in your capable hands, everything will go by and by. It'll be okay. I ask Father, that you will continue to protect the Paris family. Yes, Lord. Dr. Paris has been a part of all of us. And bless him, Father, 
as he goes through his medical concerns. And Lord, on a high note, we lost a great sister from here, Sister Dudley. We ask that you will protect and bless their family. And also, Lord Jesus, Deacon Barbara Green, as she has lost a loved one. We ask that you protect your family. Jesus. And protect all families, Lord, that I have not called, but you know who they are. Yes. And we ask that you continue to bless those that are sick and shut in. Yes, those that are homeless. Individuals who are in the military. Yes. And Father, my God, I ask that you could continue to bless my spouse and me as I go through my medical issues, as she goes through hers. But Father, most of all, we want you to know that we are a family. We are your family. And we're here to do your will. Because it's not our will that will be done, it is yours. Now, Lord, we said thank you. We said thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, let us prepare for our dismissal. But it's not a dismissal from God. It's just a dismissal from this place. But we're always going to be connected together as his children. Now unto him that's able to keep you from falling Amen. Yes, and to present you faultless before his presence of his glory and with the exceeding joy to the only, to the only wise God, Amen. our Savior, to be glory and majesty, dominion and power, yes, Lord. both now and ever. Let us all say amen. Amen. We'll now have the ushers to amen. direct us as we exit the sanctuary. Amen. Go in peace. We love you.